Well, good morning. Welcome to our service of, of worship here at Abbott's Cross this morning. You're, you're very welcome. Uh, it's great to see you. It's great to see the, the nice weather so I can see you more clearly uh, as well. Um, just a few announcements. I did, a, I, I did dwell on... There we go. I was saying nice things about you when you couldn't hear. Uh, so I, I hope you're feeling very welcome. A um, couple of announcements. Uh, I did dwell on it last week about if you're going on a, a summer mission team to, to email the office. Apparently there's still time because it's in the announcements, but it's underlined. So if you're not totally convinced that Nicola already knows about it, drop an email to make sure that you, you don't get forgotten about. On your way in, many of you will have been handed w letters. You may have been a bit confused. What are, what are these letters for? They're, they're contribution letters. They have a little summary of your giving to the church over the year. And I think the purpose of it is so that you can check that it matches what you think you've given and make sure no one's been um, dipping their hand in the till for want of, a, want of a better phrase. So if you haven't got one of those, it's probably because you came in in that entrance. So if you can have a look for them at the back, that would be helpful. Um, home groups are meeting this week. If you haven't heard about it, it's probably time to, to contact the leader of your home group and, and just confirm what's, what's happening with that. Um, there's a little announcement about a tier fund barbecue happening on May Day. Uh, there's not that many details, but one of the details that I have been given is that no salads will be provided. If you go to a barbecue and you want a salad, you're going you're gonna to have to bring that uh, for yourself for the, the tier fund fundraiser on, on May Day. Uh, there will be a sign-up sheet. I don't think it's, it's there yet today, but uh, it's, it's something you'll need to sign up for beforehand, and it's happening on May Day. Um, we meet again for worship tonight, led by uh, Tommy in the, in the McGill Hall, and that, that's us, so it's, it's, it's great to be here to, to worship God. I'm going to hand over to, to Michael, who will lead our service. Thanks, Dean. Good morning, everyone. Well, we're continuing again in our little series on Jesus Church today. We're going to be thinking again what what Jesus Church is in our together service and trying to think together. So there'll be a few different people uh, taking part today. But what I want to do is start with words from Ephesians, the letter to the Ephesians, where Paul prays for the church. Uh, and this is what he prays for the church. He prays this for us, and we pray this for one another. He says this, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he might strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the measure of the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. You know, we thought last week about the fact that we are the church. Church isn't a building, it's, it's you all as the people, the, the place where God has poured out his spirit. He's poured out his, his spirit into our lives that we might know mercy. And we're a people of mercy. We're here because of the Lord's grace. And we're here because this church, ourselves, we belong to Jesus. We belong to him. It's his church. And so we're here to meet in his name. So let me lead us as we pray this morning, and then we'll sing together. So let me lead us as we pray. Let me pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we pray this morning and we thank you that you've called us together as a family, a family called by your name, called by the name of Jesus. Lord, for you called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. You called us together like living stones. You built us together and you're continuing to build us together. And Lord, we're built and that glue that holds us together is your mercy and your grace in Jesus, that we have forgiveness for our sins that we can rejoice here today with one another because we have been set free. Set free from death and hell and sin. Lord, to live for you. So Lord, we pray today that by your spirit, you would enable us and enliven us 
to think more and more on the, the, the glorious riches that you've called us to in Christ Jesus, that we would grasp how far and wide and high and deep is your love in Christ Jesus. That we would know that love that surpasses knowledge. Lord, that we would be shaped by it. Lord, that we might be more and more like the Lord Jesus and the people that he's called us to be. So Lord, we just pray that today, by your spirit, you would teach us from your word, that you would help us to understand more and more the, the great differences there are among us, but the, the fact that you've called us together as one body. Would you help us in all of these things? For we ask them in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me invite the praise band up this morning as we're going to sing together. We're going to sing about how good it is to be the family of God together and the love that, that's bound us together. And here is love vast as the ocean. Let's stand and we'll worship the Lord together. And then William's going to lead us in prayer.
us pray. Heavenly Father, we just are thankful that we can meet in this fashion this morning. The freedom to worship you. The freedom to come into this house with this family, or to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And Father, we just are thankful that we can come in the confidence that you're still building your church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We pray this morning as we gather this morning that you'll settle our hearts and our minds and rest us in thy presence. Prepare our hearts and open our ears to what you have to say to us. And we just, just don't hear the word, but we apply it also so that our lives will prepare, bear much fruit. Father, as we consider our daily needs, help us to fully to rely on you. Just as the birds of the air don't sow or reap, yet you sustain them. Father, Lord, we just, we just thank you for the promises in your word. And Father, help us to, even at this time, to remember others this morning. Remember those who can't be in our midst due to, to health, whether they're at home or in hospital. And we pray, Lord, that you will comfort them and draw near to them, to them and their families, and that you'll minister unto them. And Father, even over this last few months, we recognize that there has been a lot of bereavement within our church family and the loss of a loved one, feeling the tremendous void of that empty chair and the one missing from the dinner table. And we think especially even of this past week of Sam's family and Ross's family. Will you draw alongside the family, minister and comfort them? And Father, as we, we come even this morning to this service and we ask you to, to remember our, our minister, Michael, give him the help and the discernment and wisdom as he, along with the elders, minister onto the flock here at Albert's Cross. Give Michael a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit as he opens your word and delivers what you've laid upon his heart. Father, we just, as we come in this moment, Lord, we just crave thy presence in our meeting. And we pray, the Lord, that your name will be lifted up and glorified this, this morning. And these pray, things we pray in your precious and glorious name. Amen.
just before I invite all the kids down to the front, Karis is going to share a story with you of God's very good idea. She's going to share that story with us this morning, and then we're going to think together about this passage. It kind of will relate to the story, but we're going to think about this, this passage of Scripture this morning, and it's from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 12. The words will be on the screen, but if you want to follow along, we're going to pick this up later and think about it, because we've already almost started to, to sing about these things, uh, about the fact that we are one body, but there's lots of different parts to the body. So let me share God's word with you from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. This is the word of the Lord. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts of the body we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is part of it. Amen, and we thank God for his word to us. Let me pray this morning, and then I'll invite you young people down, and Cash will share this story, and then we'll sing, then we'll have a wee think about this passage together. Let me pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your word, Lord, that we, you have made us delightfully different in so many ways, and yet you've made us one body. Lord, this is your idea. And Lord, even as we share in this story this morning, firstly, Lord, we pray that it might remind us of the differences that, that make up our body, Lord, and how you have done that for us, that it's your idea. And Lord, even as we think of this word of scripture together, Lord, later on, that you would help us to see what it means to be different parts of your body, but one together in Jesus. So, Lord, we just pray for Karis now as she comes to share with the kids, Lord, that you would bless her and equip her as she does that. In Jesus' name, amen. Kids, you want to come to the front? You want to come to the front here? Come down here. I'll hand over to Karis to share this story. Good stuff. Thank you. Is that everyone? Ellie, are you coming up? Go on up, Ellie. Good girl. Amazing. Okay, so like Michael said, this book is called God's Very Good Idea. I really like this story, so I hope that you guys do too. So in the beginning, in fact, before the beginning, God had a very good idea. It was an even better idea than solar panels, which were made in 1954, the Super Soaker, which was made in 1982, chocolate chip cookies, which were made in 1938, 
a color TV, which was made in 1942, fireworks, which were made in 700 BC, the life raft, which was made in 1880, rotor skates made in 1760, and the X-ray machine made in 1895. God's idea was to make people, lots of people, lots of different people, who would all enjoy loving him and all enjoy loving each other. They would all be made in his image. They would all be like mirrors, reflecting what God is like. Because God is full of love, they would be full of love too. So God got to work. He made a beautiful world for people to live in. Then he made the first people, a man and a woman. And he said to them, be happy, enjoy loving me and loving each other. Have a huge family that will fill the earth and look after the earth and enjoy the earth. All of them were made in his image. And God carried on creating these people. All of them were different too. Some were men and some were women. Some liked reading and some liked riding bikes. Some had darker skin and some had lighter skin. Some had curly hair and some had straight hair. We live in God's world. We are all different, but we are also all the same. Everyone you see is different than you and the same as you. They might look different or speak different or play different, but they are all made in God's image and so they are all valuable. This is God's very good idea. But people ruined God's very good idea. The first people chose not to love God. This is called sin. And because they chose not to love God as they should, they forgot how to love each other as they should. We are the same. We choose not to love God. And so we are not able to love each other like we should. We sin. Sometimes we treat others badly because they are different than us. People fight with each other. People are mean to each other. People laugh at each other. Because we have ruined God's very good idea, he is not pleased with us. Our sin means that we can't be friends with him or enjoy living with him. We need God's forgiveness for ruining his very good idea. It's the same for everyone in the world. People who like reading need forgiveness and people who like riding bikes need forgiveness. People with darker skin need forgiveness, and people with lighter skin need, need forgiveness. People with curly hair need forgiveness, and people with straight hair need forgiveness. But God was not surprised by people ruining things. He had always had a very good plan to rescue his very good idea. So God got to work. He came to earth as a person, Jesus Jesus loved people who were different than him. He loved people who no one else loved. He always enjoyed loving all the different people he met. Jesus shows us how to enjoy loving each other. But people didn't love Jesus. Instead, they hated him. They put him on a cross to die. But this was part of God's plan. On the cross, Jesus took our sin so that we can be forgiven. Jesus forgives his people for their sin. Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose back to life and then went back to live in heaven. And then he gave his people his spirit to help them enjoy loving him and loving all the different people they know. Jesus helps us to love each other. One day, God will finish his very good idea. Jesus will come back and make the world perfect again. And anyone who has asked Jesus to forgive them will live there with their different languages and skin colors. They will enjoy loving God and loving each other. They will enjoy praising God for making, rescuing, and finishing his very good idea. But here's a very, very, very good part of God's very good idea. You don't have to wait until then to enjoy it. Jesus welcomes anyone who asks him to forgive them. And when Jesus welcomes someone, he welcomes them into his family forever. He welcomes people who like reading and people who like riding bikes. He welcomes people with darker skin and people with lighter skin. 
He welcomes people with curly hair and people with straight hair. God's family is called the church. Your church friends are your brothers and sisters, your wonderful and colorful church family. You can enjoy loving them and loving God with them. This is God's very good idea. Lots of different people enjoying loving him and loving each other. God made it, people ruined it, he rescued it, and he will finish it. And with your church family, you can enjoy being part of it right now. Thank you so much for listening. You did really well. Thank you. a good story. We're going to think about this story together in a wee bit and that passage of scripture that we read together. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to sing again just before we do that. We're going to thank Jesus because Jesus has given us this great family, his family, the church, and he's made us all different. So we're going to thank him and we're going to praise him and then we'll have a wee think about it together again, okay? Come on down, Anna. Come on down, Anna. I need your help. I need your help this morning. I'm going to think together. You're going to come too, Hannah? You're going to come sit down? You come have a wee seat. Do you need a wee lift up, do you? Can you climb up yourself? Good girl. That's brilliant. Fantastic. We're going to have a wee think this morning, uh, a wee bit about this story, and a wee bit about the passage of the Bible that we read, okay? So... This is what I wanted us to think about this morning. As Jesus' church, we are one people, all delightfully different. I want you to think for me this morning, is there something about you that makes you different from everybody else? Do you have anything special about you that you can think of that makes you different from everybody else? Does anyone know? Anyone have anything? Stevie, do you have something? You can turn your feet backwards. I feel like we all want the demonstration of that. <laughs> but then again, if you turned your feet backwards, we might all feel like we need to phone an ambulance or something. <laughs> that's very good. So Stevie, Stevie can turn his feet backwards. Anyone else can do something that's, that's different? 
Do you want to see my difference? This is as straight as my finger goes. See my finger? Try and straighten it out, Ellie. Try and straighten it out, Ethan. Look at it. You see how bent it is? Try and straighten it out, CJ. Try and straighten it out. Doesn't, doesn't go, sure doesn't. Nope. Yeah, this is, my, this is my weird thing that I picked up. This is from a rugby injury. And my, 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 my finger feel, like healed funny. So now I've got a wonky finger. That's something different about me. See if he can turn his feet backwards. I've got a wonky finger. Is there anything else from any of you? Anyone in the car you hasn't got something? Something that makes him different? What about you, CJ? I can make different funny voices. You can make different funny voices? Do you want to give us a funny voice? <laughs> that was a good one. Good funny voices. Yeah, you can make funny voices. Anyone else? Anyone in the car? Yeah, Lord, yeah what, do you get? what do you have? You can do what? You can twist your tongue? Like turn upside down? Hey, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Anyone else in the congregation something that makes them different? What if you get Anna? You what what? My dad does not eat sweets. You're giving one you're volunteering one for your dad. Your dad doesn't eat sweets. Uh, Dean doesn't have a sweet tooth. You can't offer him anything. See if you see if he comes to your house and you offer him tea and coffee. He just says no. He just says no. no. Yeah. <laughs> Ethan, what about you? Can you think of something? Can't think of anything. Do you, know, do you know what? When you get older, you'll start to see maybe things about yourself that are a little bit different. You'll start to maybe think, figure out that you're not like everybody else. What can you do, Ethan? What's different about you? You did an Easter hunt inside and no one else did that? That's pretty good. So you had a, a different thought than anyone else. When you get older, this is what you think of. You'll discover that you're different from everybody else and that's okay. God has made each one of us completely different. But when you're a Christian, he's decided to do something very, very special. Even though you're completely different to everyone else in the world, when you come to know Jesus, remember what we thought about last week? You're like a little brick. And you start to get joined on to all these other bricks. That's what you're like. You're a brick that's a completely unique brick. I gave you bricks last week that look all like the same, didn't I? But each one of you is actually a different type of brick. You're all different, and Jesus joins us all together in his church. Yeah, Anna? You're in your teacher's first what? Proper class? Yes, she used to be a teacher. Ah, okay. So you're like a, you're like a number one student, are you, Anna? Are you? Uh, everyone in your class is very good. Yeah, so we're all different, and we all form one body. That's a Jesus' big, uh, good idea to, to who you are in your completely unique person. That means you're special. There's no one else like you. Jesus takes you, and he starts to build you together with all these other different, unique people. So we're going to think about this in the set of verses that we thought of. So I want you today, I want you today to think of yourself as this. Here's my wee skeleton. We can take him off his thing. This is my wee skeleton. Got him this week. He can, he can wave. Hello, Hannah. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Give him high fives. High five, Ethan. Yeah, there we go. There's my wee skeleton. I want you to think of yourself as a body. That's what the, in the passage of Scripture we read, the church, Jesus' people are like a body. So if you imagine yourself, this is, this is in you. That all these bones are in you. Isn't that, isn't that weird? Under all that skin, and all that soft stuff is a, a wee skeleton looks like this. Anyone ever broken a bone before? Yeah. I yeah. Bones. You've got a lot of broken bones, Ethan. That's no good. So it is. These are all your bones. All your bones are in here. There's, there's my, my wee finger. My wee finger bone got broken. See? Here he is. I can get you. Oh, his leg fell off. <laughs> terrible. His leg fell off. My goodness, that's a terrible job. I've been spinning his leg too much, and Eden's been spinning his leg too much. Oh, look, there's his wee bolt. See, this is, this, is when, this is what happens when you need a hip replacement. <laughs> There's a few people in the congregation waiting on one of these. <laughs> yeah, well, hold on a wee second, seeing as I've broken his leg. It wouldn't be a very good job with his leg come off. Sure it wouldn't? It'd be a very bad skeleton, wouldn't it? Right, I want you to think of this. I'm going to have to hold him here. Otherwise, his other leg will come off. If you could be a part of this skeleton, what part would you be? The broken leg? No. No. No, what part would you be, Hannah? What would you like to be? Which part of the skeleton? 
Would you be a hand? Do, do, do. Yeah, you'd be a wee hand. What about you? What about you, CJ? What part would you be? If you could pick a part, you have to be one bone. What bone would you be? The head. The head. You'd be the skull, like a big skull. What part would you be, Ethan? Hey, um, the teeth. The teeth. The teeth. Look, he actually is. Is we jaw can move. Wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, you could be the jaw. You do, you do the speaking. Wah, 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 wah. You could do C, you could do CJ's funny voices, couldn't you? Isn't that right, Anna? What would you be? The whole body? You can't be the whole bit. You have to pick one bit. No, I'm going to assign you a bit. You can be this, this, no, this femur. You can be a femur. I'm, I'm the head. Oh, you're, the, you're the what? The tooth? No. <laughs> the head? You're the head too? I'm can't all be the head. the head. What about you, Daniel? You can pick a part. The brain. The brain? You're going to be the brain, Daniel? Good choice. He's in the head. He's in the head. Okay, you can be the brain. Yeah, like we're all different. Like, so this is what we're called to think of. We're called to think of ourselves as a body, okay? And I got you to think about being a specific bit because imagine you were a foot. No one said a foot. No one wanted to be a foot. No one wanted to be a foot. You want to be a wee foot? Woo! You don't want to be a wee foot? Right, imagine you were a foot. What could you do if you were a foot? You can, you can move it. You can, it. What if you had no feet? What if you didn't have any feet? You would have to could you walk? No, you, you, you could use crutches on your wee no feet. I think you'd need a wheelchair, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you'd have to walk around like that, but then your, your, your bones or your things would get really sore, wouldn't they? You need feet to walk around, don't you? Yep. Right. You need the feet, don't you, Ethan? Imagine you had no feet. Would that be bad? Oh, at least you wouldn't have to buy shoes, you wouldn't. You need to walk. You'd need to walk high. With, with pants, with no trousers. You wouldn't have. Yeah, it'd be hard to put on your trousers. Yeah, because you wouldn't have any feet. No, sure you wouldn't. Yeah. So imagine you were a foot, but imagine you hated being a foot. Yeah. I mean, standing on the dirty ground all the time, having to carry a body all around the place, being stuffed in a shoe, being stuffed in a shoe, having to have a stinky sock over your head. Imagine you were a foot. But imagine you were a foot and you looked at the hand and said, man, I wish I was a hand. Hands get to do all the fun stuff. What do hands get to do? Get to hold an ice cream, don't they? Yeah. Eat an ice cream. What else do hands get to do? They don't have to wear stinky, stinky socks on them, do they? Um, yeah, yeah they, don't have to, they don't have to like go on the, on the mucky ground. Sure they don't? Yeah. No? Imagine you were a foot and you looked at the hand and you went, I wish I was a hand. I wish I was a hand. That's what, that's what the Apostle Paul tells us to think about. He says, imagine you were like a foot, and you looked at the hand and thought, I wish I was a hand, and because I'm not a hand, I don't want to be part of this body. And the foot cut himself off. Would that be bad? He says... Imagine the, foot, imagine the foot so wanted to be a hand, and he was jealous of the hand. He said, I'm not a hand, so I must be useless, and he cut himself off. Then he would have no feet. She wouldn't. You would have, you'd have one foot, but what if the other foot looked at the hand, and he thought the same thing? Then he would have no feet. It'd be no good. Yeah, because I cut him off. He's upside down now, Ethan, because I cut him off. So imagine you took away, oh, I had no foot. Do you think my... Do you think my skeleton would get very far now? He'd have to hop everywhere, wouldn't he? Well, you know, that, that's exactly what was in our passage of Scripture. And it also says this. Imagine you were an ear. What would it like to be an ear? What can an ear do? It has wax in it. Oh, it does have wax in it, doesn't it? Do you have waxy ears, does it? Do you have it, CJ? Yeah, yeah. Waxy ears. Do you want to see some of my ear wax? No. No. <laughs> No? No? So yeah, sometimes your ears get waxy, but what do our ears do? What if you had no ears? What if you had no ears, Ellie? Could you hear? No, you couldn't hear. She so couldn't. Does anyone like hearing? Do you like listening to music? Yeah. Yeah, can you imagine your ear bopping away to some music? Yeah. We ear. 
Yeah, when you're cleaning up. You do you listen to music when you're cleaning up, Ethan? Yeah. That's very good. It's good to know Ethan's doing his chores in the house. <laughs> you can shake his hand. You can shake his hand a wee second. So, imagine you were the ear, but you looked at the eye, and you said, I wish I was an eye. What can an eye do? Does an eye, does an eye get wax on it? No. No, it doesn't. No. It does, does it? Does your eye, does your eye get wax on it? It gets wee gunky. Sometimes it gets gunky. Yeah. A gunky eye. But what can an eye do? An eye can see. Would you rather not have your ears or not have your eyes? Mm, that's a hard one, isn't it? Yeah. Would you rather not hear or not be able to see? Yeah. Mm. Not able to see? Yes, yeah, or so? Yeah, well, sometimes. Yeah. Oh, I see you don't see. Oh, she'll do sign language for you so you can understand. Very good, yeah. So imagine the ear said, I wish I was an eye. The eye gets to do lots of stuff. The eye gets to see things and do everything like that. And I wish I was an eye. And so imagine that ear said, because I am not an eye, I'm going to cut myself off. Do you want an ear? Do you want an ear? A free ear? Yeah. It wouldn't be very good, sure wouldn't. Does that help the ear? No. Does it help the eye? No, it doesn't help anybody. But why does the skeleton have an ear? The skeleton doesn't have any ear because it doesn't have any fleshy bits on it. On your skeleton is all your fleshy bits. Right, I'm going to think of one more thing, right? Imagine, this is the last bit we're going to imagine. Okay, you ready? Imagine you were... No. What's this? A butt. A butt? Imagine you were a butt. Do you know... Do you, know that our, do you know that our passage of Scripture is actually making mention of this? It says there are some parts of the body that we treat in a very special way. No. Do you show your bum in public? No. I should hope not. I should hope not. What do you have to wear? Yeah. Pants and trousers. You cover up your bum, but... Let me ask you a question. Do you need your bum? Yeah, yeah you do. No. You do. Why? Because where else would all the nasty things that you eat come out of when you finish digesting them? Ah, see, everybody needs a bum. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul says that there are parts of the body we treat with a, in a very special, modest way, but he also says they're really important parts of the body because if you didn't have them, you wouldn't work. It can't be seen in public. You can't go showing your bum in public. You'll get arrested, and that's a good thing. But if you didn't have me, you would die. That's what the butt says. Yeah, and so... So this teaches us a very important lesson about, about the church and all as well. Because there are some jobs and some parts of the body that are really, really important, but we don't, we don't always see them. We don't always think they're important, but they are. And so that's what it means to be part of a body of people. We all are different people, and we all form one part of the body, and all the parts have to work together for the good of the body. And that also means sometimes there's parts that don't get seen. There's parts that do jobs that no one else wants to do. Sometimes there's jobs in the church that we have to do all the time that nobody really likes doing, but they get done. And so it's really, really important. We're different but one part can't do everything. That's why it's really important that we become a body, a connected body with all different types of people. All different types of people. Some people are on display at the front all the time. Some people do work behind the scenes and they're covered up. Other people are maybe like a hand. They go and do things to help other people. Other people are like a foot. They maybe go and visit other people. We all are different parts of the body, and that's the idea we're to think of. If one part was missing, imagine you didn't have a leg, or you didn't have an ear, or you didn't have a butt. 
would it be bad? Yeah. yeah, it would be really, really bad. And here's the important thing, Anna. Here's the important thing. When we belong to Jesus, when we trust in him, Jesus says you're part of the body. You're part of the body. You belong in the body. And if you decide for some other reason, well, I'm not very important because I'm not like him, or I'm not very important because I'm not like her, so I'm going to remove myself from the body, that's actually not a good thing. We belong together as Jesus' body, no matter what we think about ourselves. Sometimes we might feel like we're the the back end, but Jesus says we belong in the body because without it, without being part of the body, the body loses out. And so this is the amazing thing about being part of Jesus' church. We need everyone who belongs to Jesus to be in Jesus' body, to function, to be a full body of believers. One people, all delightfully different, making up one connected body in Christ. So when you're about the place and you think about the body, you think about all the different parts, you think about who you are as a person, you have to understand this. When you trust in Jesus, you belong connected with the other believers. No matter what you think about yourself, whether you think you're an amazing part of the body or whether you think you're not, you belong there because of Jesus. So I'm going to pray for us that the Lord will help us to understand this. And then we're going to sing together as we close. But you remember the little skeleton. You remember the part of the the parts of the body. You remember how important it is to be connected all together, but that you're different. Different, but connected together in Jesus. Let me pray, uh, and then we'll sing together. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we, we want to thank you that you have made us all different, that there is not one of us who is exactly alike. And though we're different, Lord, you call us to be one body with all its different parts, the parts that are in show and the parts, Lord, that get covered up. Lord, you say they're all important. They all make up one body of believers. And so, Lord, we don't want to be a foot that envies a hand. Lord, we don't want to be ears that look to what the eyes are doing. Lord, we don't even want to be, be parts of the body, Lord, that, that are dishonorable in the sense, Lord, that we we want to serve you in the ways that you've called us to, even if that goes unseen, even if that's a dirty job or jobs that, that people don't look to as important. Lord, we pray in all of these things as a body, one body working together, Lord, that you would make us your church. Lord, that you would help us to be one body in Christ, giving honor and glory to him. So Lord, help us in all the, the ways that we're different. Help us to be connected together as a people here in Christ, for we ask it in his name. Amen. We're going to sing together to close, and we're going to sing a a song called For the Cause. So, So as a body, Jesus calls us to go. He calls us to go with his good news, to invite other people into his body, into his church, and so that's what we're going to sing with to close, and then I'll pray.
Our Father in heaven, we thank you that Christ's salvation is for every nation. And Lord, we long for that day and look to that day when all nations will gather before him as his people, as his church united in one body with Christ as the head. So Lord, in all these things, we give you praise and honor and glory and ask that grace, mercy, and peace from Father, Son, and Holy Spirit would be with us and go with us now and forevermore. Amen.